Afternoon. Thank you very much for picking this session. My name is David, and I've been using Tableau for about four years. During the next 15 minutes, uh, we'll be talking about color. But before we do, I want you to picture this. It's 2017. We are in Las Vegas. There's 10,000 people in the audience. It's the Iron Viz final of the year. Tristan is there, and he has his own visualization showing. We're coming to the end of the contest. One of the judges asks, this is great work, but did you consider that red and blue might convey a political scheme? The room went silent. Of course, the judge was asking about Republicans and Democrats and a very charged time politically in the United States. The answer that came after surprised everyone. Tristan said, actually, I didn't. Um, I looked at it, and I wanted to represent my country. You see, I'm from France. I wanted to have a, a, the ability of convey my own, or symbolize my own country in the visualization that I created. So it's important whenever we think about color to think about our own environment, the background, and where we come from. But what is color? It's color is the frequency of light detectable by, human, by the human eye. It's a measure of how quickly uh, light waves are moving. That's explained here by the visible lightning spectrum. So it's a section of electromagnetic radiation, radiation that is visible to the human eye. Essentially, it equates to the colors that the human eye see. In one range, you have at the shortest wavelengths, somewhere around 400 nanometers, uh, you have violet on one side. And on the other spectrum, the longest waves, you have red at somewhere around 700 nanometers. And this is also called uh, the optical spectrum of light or the spectrum of white light. Despite our differences in cultures, we humans have a common pattern of looking at the world. Berlin and Kay's uh, work proposed that the basic color terms in a culture, such as black, brown, or red, are predictable by the number of colors that the culture has. So for instance, all cultures have uh, black or dark. They also have white or bright. But if a culture has a third term for a, uh, for a color, that color is always going to be red. And if there are four, that color will always going to be either green or yellow. So the meaning of color is complex and varies dramatically. So when you're looking at the meaning of color, it is important to understand the differences across cultures. It's also important to understand the meanings are universal in some instances, but many colors are associated with rituals, holidays, and traditions. When people across the world see various colors, each individual's background and environment creates their own unique interpretation of that color. So let's take a look at that. I start with black, and we're going to follow Berlin and Kay's uh, number, the idea in terms of the way that they structured color and color terms. So on the black side, you have authority, which is worn by judges to this day in the US. Businessmen, salarymen in, in Japan, they always wear black suits. The color of mourning, so at a funeral in the Western world, it's black. It's also connotations with evil, that's magic. On the other hand, it's also synonym or linked to elegance and luxury. Think about Coco Chanel, for instance, it's been making a brand out of that color. White, on the other hand, represents purity, virginity, and honesty, neutrality and sacrifice. Think back to the Pope. The fact that he wears white is a symbol of sacrifice to the church. In direct contrast to what we've seen just in the previous slide, uh, in some Asian countries, the color of mourning is no longer uh, black, but it's going to be white. So if you're in Japan, a funeral will be mainly dressed in, in white and complete, uh, pardon, completely opposite uh, in, the, in the US. Red, as I've mentioned, has the longest wavelength. It's our most visually dominant color, and it's well known by blood, lust, passion, good fortune. Good fortune is very important in China, 
bridesmaids will use um, red dresses as a, a way of bringing good luck for the years to come. On the other hand, red also means danger, aggression, anger, immorality, and bloodshed. I'm originally from Portugal. The two main colors that we have in our flag, one of them is red. And it represents the bloodshed and the wars that we fought through uh, as the country has been formed. That's not dissimilar to a lot of the countries that you're all from. And it's, it's been one of those things that has been used time and time again. So red color is also interesting that due to its longer wavelength, does not scatter the particles in the atmosphere in the same way as the other colors do. And hence, it reaches our eyes with a lot more distinction than other colors. There's the reason why the red color is used on a stop sign. You can see it almost a mile away. Interestingly, researchers have found that red can invoke a sense of urgency. It also has the ability to whet our appetites. Uh, and it's no surprise that when you pair those two together, you got the perfect recipe to attract hungry customers that want food quick and fast, and they want to go and use that. So a lot of the brands that are using those colors, and we're missing some. Pizza Hut, for instance, is missing. It's also red. Green, on the other hand, uh, reminds us of nature, life, health, spring, and hope. I've mentioned to you that Portugal's flag, the Portugal flag has two colors. The second one is green. Because despite everything that happened, and the, despite the red, there's always hope that the next day will be better. Toxicity. So if you think about toxic waste and how it's represented in our culture, or, so, uh, or socially, typically it's uh, in green. And poor health. Something like, uh, oh, I've eaten something and I'm not feeling really well, so I'm turning, you're kind of turning green. So it's a very common expression. And then you have something else that I think is quite interesting, safety and permission. That's never more evident in the green card for access to the, American, to the United States. Because what it's representing is that we're going to give you a green slip that's going to give you the ability to cross the border and you'll be safe within our borders. This is a very poignant way of using color in something that's so ubiquitous in, in North America. Yellow, on the other hand, represents sun, intellect, optimism, amusement, humor, and spontaneity. Duplicity and envy on the other side, and jealousy. In ancient Egypt, uh, women's skin colors were painted, painted yellow to distinguish. Uh, in Native American, the color yellow, uh, it's represented as unconditional love. And then we have blue. Blue is fascinating for me. Uh, is anyone here from Russia? So I learned, while I was researching for that, that Russia has two blues. It doesn't have, it's not that they have different tones, they have two blues. One is, uh, represents the sky, the other one will be the sea. Is that uh, a fair? Um, and we have a similar color, as in when I say we, I'm thinking about uh, the, the Western Europe. Uh, we also do that with another color. We'll come back to that later. So blue uh, represents calm and concentration, harmony, confidence, and faithfulness. It's no wonder it's being used by United Nations, military uniforms, business suits. It also brings feelings of sadness, longing, and kind of feeling blue. Every color in the rainbow inspires us, different feelings and communicate different qualities to our consumers. The color blue is typically associated with credibility, trust, knowledge, power, professionalism, cleanliness, calm, and focus. The healthcare industry relies on the blue color more than any industry. When we look at the leading providers using the color blue for their logos, it's almost 85%. But there are exceptions. For anyone that doesn't know, CVS Pharmacy is a huge retailer in terms of pharmacy, drug stores in, U in the US. And you'll be asking, why are they using something like that? Such a bold, strong logo. So red, as we've seen, signify danger, excitement, and seems like a strange choice at first. But when we look at their competitors, the Walgreens, the Target, they also use red. The reason for that is because, like fast food, their main objective is to lure customers through the doors. So they 
use a logo like that with that idea. It's also important to refer that drugstores are not at the pointy end of healthcare. They're not providing life and death uh, care like the Blue Cross Blue Shield or NHS out in the UK. So they can get away with focusing more on the marketing side and less on, on the healthcare side. Brown is our least favorite color. Uh, it's common or links to plainness, rustic, and poverty. Purple, on the other hand, we associate it with rarity, royalty, magic, and mystery, eroticism, and seduction. The Byzantine Empire and church have used the color purple for centuries, so the church uh, priest will use a stole over his neck as a way to represent the church on top of white. Similarly, in Japan, it's also associated with uh, the emperor and the aristocracy. It's interesting as well that uh, purple seems to be the color favored by uh, women and girls, and it's also symbolic of women's empowerment initiatives. Orange is a curious one. It's the only color that has the name of a fruit. Uh, we link it with autumn, creativity, warmth, loudness, unconventional danger, taste, and aroma. It is incredibly important in Asia uh, for the Buddhism and Hinduism cultures. And then we have gray. And it's just a little bit dull. It reminds us of undecidedness, neutrality, conformity. It's no surprise that only 1% According to surveys, only 1% of responders chose it as their preferred color. And that leads us to the last one, pink. Pink brings us charm, politeness, tenderness, and childhood, femininity, and the romantic. It was first used as a color in the 17th century. I've mentioned earlier that, uh, like Russia, we also do two colors when other cultures only use one. And no one calls that light red. And that's the color that we use. We have a perfect distinction between what is red and what is pink, the same way that uh, Russia has with relation to the blue of the sky and the, and the blue of the sea. It's interesting that when you pair uh, pink with other colors, you get different feelings. So if you pair pink with white, we have the innocence and virginity. Pair it with black, and it evokes feelings of eroticism and seduction. So this session as a lightning talk is aimed to serve you as an inspiration, to make you think a little bit about the colors that you use on your day-to-day, -day, on your dashboards, to think about your audience that you're conveying the message to. Um, but I also don't expect you now to go back and know how to use all of the colors and think about that every day. So what I would suggest instead is tomorrow when you get back to work, open Tableau Public. You have a thousand authors already using the platform. It's a platform that's free to you to be used as to be inspired, to learn, to be challenged. All of the, uh, the visualizations that you have there, you have the ability of pulling in the data sets. You have the ability of seeing the colors that are being used. Pick the ones that are striking and apply some of those within uh, your own visualizations. Always remember that you have to have your audience in mind, but it's a lot of fun to play with color. Thank you.